We now depend on the old-fashioned way for cooking because there is no gas as the regime considers our area as outside its control. This is soup. We usually use grains most of the time, such as rice, because there is no refrigerator. We only have one meal per day because we can't store food, as there is no electricity, and also the food prices are very expensive. I live in a Zawiya mountain, and this is my work now. Someone paid me to chop this firewood so I can feed my kids. The work is occasional. The day someone hires me, we eat. But the day when no one hires me, we don't eat. There's no fuel or firewood for sale. We chop our trees to give us wood, so we can warm our homes in winter. This is firewood from fig tree, which is very difficult to chop, but I have to. Sometimes we spend five days without having even bread. I swear my son today was crying asking for a piece of bread, and I couldn't do anything because we don't have any. I want to be a student and to have money like all the girls. It's shame that I missed two years of school. I don't have clothes apart from this dress. When I wash it, I have to cover myself with towel until it dries. Sometimes I wear it before it dries completely. The main water lines have been cut completely for two years. There was some water coming in by using those generators, but since the regime cut the water, no one can extract any water anymore. These become the alternative. We fill them and then use that water in the kitchen, bathroom and for drinking. Here we are using a premium stove that we used for cooking more than a hundred years ago. It's very old. We had to start using it again after the revolution. All the regimes around the world take their nation forward, but Assad's regime is taking us backward. I fill this cooker with gas or diesel and it works like that. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I 
قد ايه كرمانتينا؟ كرمانتينا ورقه وربع وقد زيته؟ 3 وربع الكيلو هذا سيدي 3 وربع حلو كيلو غالي كيلو غالي انا النقيب يعرب عيسى قائد سريه المهام الخاصه بقياده القوات الخاصه لا انا حاربت من بدايه الازمه بادلب سنه ونص بخان العسل بحلب سبع شهور وببرزي وحاليا بالقابون اول ازمه بس هون بالمكان حاليا سنه واربع شهور بشد بعد احيان هدوء وبعد احيان اشتباكات عنيفه يعني حسب التعليمات اللي بتجي عند المصلحين بعد احيان بضل فتره هدوء بتستمر عده ايام وبعد احيان بصير اشتباكات عنيفه بصير اشتباكات عنيفه استمر لعدة ساعات نحن لما قمنا بهجوم الا وطلع عملنا طوق حول القياده كانت قياده القوات مهدده بال من تقريبا سنه ونص فقمنا بهجوم احتلينا هي المناطق وعملنا طوق حول القياده كانت مهمتنا دفاعيه يعني بعد الاحتلال الطوق صارت مهمتنا دفاعيه حرب لتقسيم سوريا اضعاف الجيش السوري نهب خيرات البلد قامت حرب طائفية تستمر لعدة سنوات يعني هي الهدف من الخدمة للمشروع الصهيوني والأمريكي بالمنطقة. I'm a Japanese teacher. I I work as a teacher in the in my college in the Japanese department. So that's what I do. In in my free times, I'm here as a volunteer. How long have you been doing this? For two years. And what got you into it? Because everyone here. Uh, feel that uh, they have to do something in this uh, conflict so each one choose a way and I chose this way let's talk a bit about the experiences I mean sometimes you go to dangerous places right yeah but uh, when an explosion happens and we are there you you can predict how how much dangerous it is but you just go there so of course me and all of us uh, many times we just uh, put our life uh, on jeopardy when you're doing that, do you feel scared? You know, we are not like robots. When it's really dangerous, you are scared. But you have the choice either to do it or to step back and run away. And you always do it? Yes. That's why we are here. Be because you put the other's life before yours. Tell me what goes through your mind and in your, you know, your heart as well. When you get the alert to go somewhere, you may hear that there's been an explosion, a mortar attack. Well, if it's really dangerous where I'm going, uh, the first thing I think about is my family. That will they be okay if I, if I get hurt or something? And will I really get hurt or not? This is when I think about my personal life, but the first thing you would think about is, is uh, can you really help now? If you if you now meet people who are really injured and who needs you, can you do something to him, to them? Can you really be useful to them? Tell me what you do when you arrive at a scene that may be two or three or more badly wounded people. How do you decide who to help? You decide, first of all, the people there get really crazy and you have to calm them down. Everyone's shouting, even the people on the, on the ground. So you have to be the, the strongest one there. You have to look at the image from the outside, not to be in it. Because everyone is in it. In that, even if you are in it, you have to be an outsider. And you have to, like, to, to see all the scene and to decide what's uh, more dangerous and what's more serious uh, injured. And you go to the most one who needs you. When you first did it and you first went to a, a place when there had been an attack and you saw people who had been terribly injured with blood and, you know, awful sights, yeah, I what, what, what was it like? Night. I couldn't sleep that night. It was the har most horrible thing I've ever been through. Because you see this on TV, but you never really face it on your daily life, even if you are here. You don't have to face it always. But when you really face it for the first time, you just know how, how strong you are inside. 
For Syrians wanting to get their information from media not controlled by the Assad regime, they might tune in to this opposition-supporting radio station, Radio al Kul, broadcasting from here in Istanbul. Now, this is the main newsroom, but the staff are so worried about potential attacks by the regime against members of their family still in Syria that they don't want us to show their faces. It's a station which broadcasts on FM in Syria, but also online there and to Syrian refugees here in Turkey. They're currently preparing their one o'clock news program, which is about to go on air. The station broadcasts news, discussion programs, and an early warning system to tell those in opposition areas about imminent airstrikes from the regime. It's a vital tool in Syria's war, says the manager of Radio Al Kul. We have some people that provide us with information that jet or that uh, helicopter will go maybe to that neighborhood. So we, we are now working on an early system that to aware the people that this area w maybe will be targeted f from the regime. And by supporting uh, people on the ground, uh, they have shelters and tell the people go to those shelters, maybe, maybe we can save some of lives. We have to provide the people in Syria the accurate information the accurate opinions. The regime is just uh, telling all the time lies and lies and lies. The regime uh, media telling people a different story of why uh, there is a war in Syria. So we have to fight the regime in our way. People on the ground fighting the regime with weapons. Now we are in media fighting the lies of the regime. Do you think you can win the information war against the regime? Now we, we have very hard and difficult situation outside Syria, especially funding. If we have more funding, yes, we can win because the thing that we have is truth and that will win.